Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-6373. Containment class, neutralized. Previously, Keter. Assigned site, Area 179. Site director, J. Barrow. Research head, J. Dune. Assigned task force, non-applicable. Special Containment Procedures The building containing SCP-6373 has been outfitted with a closed-circuit surveillance system and shuttered from public access. Assigned personnel are to view and transcribe SCP-6373's daily performances. Counseling is available as a part of post-viewing debriefing. Personnel are expected to be repulsed. Description SCP-6373 is a collection of four papier-mâché puppets each one meter in height. Chemical analysis indicates each puppet's exterior is constructed from non-anomalous material. All attempts to observe the interior of SCP-6373 through either physical or endoscopic means have failed. All instances are attached to an individual set of strings bound together by a plastic cross-shaped mechanism intended for control by a puppeteer. SCP-6373 emit a strong rotting odor causing visceral nausea. This response is entirely non-anomalous. At 1800 hours daily, SCP-6373 will gain anomalous properties, primarily limited sentience, mobility, and intelligence. Attempts to interact with objects outside of SCP-6373 events, see below, have failed. This event will not occur if SCP-6373 are contained in a location other than the Gofford Theater located in Reading, Pennsylvania. Instead, they will remain inert objects. SCP-6373 will then begin a rapid deterioration process involving slowly melting their papier-mâché bodies and emitting a stronger, more intensive odor as a result. This process continues until SCP-6373 are placed within a 12-meter vicinity of the Gofford Theater. When conditions for animation are sufficient, SCP-6373 proceed to the main stage of the theater to perform an act, classified as an SCP-6373 event. The details of this performance are fluid and ever-changing, and presently, no repeat performances have been observed. An audience of at least one individual must be present at the theater to observe the performance, otherwise SCP-6373 will undergo decomposition. SCP-6373 Event Summary and cast. Overview An SCP-6373 event is a largely unorganized and spontaneous performance acted out by SCP-6373, featuring unorthodox attempts at humor, storytelling, and entertainment. Audience attempts to interact with SCP-6373 during a performance have resulted in injury. Performances do not have a set length, ranging from two minutes to three weeks in length. Descriptions of each puppet's physical appearance and typical role in an SCP-6373 event can be found below. SCP-6373-1 is an elderly male with a pointed nose and large eyes, clad in a beret, black sweater, and striped shirt. SCP-6373-1 is referred to as Pierre and serves as the performance's host and central character. SCP-6373-2 has a large, bald, disembodied head with sizable ears and an open-mouthed expression. SCP-6373-2 is referred to as Glouton and is incapable of speaking outside of deep, guttural moaning and single-word statements. SCP-6373-3 is a diminutive, disembodied head with closed, sunken eyes and a solemn expression. It is noticeably smaller than the others and its skin is painted a discolored gray. While the puppet features no limbs, much like Glouton, audiences have observed its strings being pulled during performances as if articulated joints were present. SCP-6373 is referred to as Ame. Though Ame does not typically speak or make noise, it will on occasion silently cry. Ame is the most frequent target of Pierre's verbal and physical abuse. SCP-6373-4 is a long-necked clown, wearing an outfit typical of such, with white gloves. SCP-6373-4 is the only puppet with a hinged jaw, 
intended to be operated through the use of a string connected at the bottom of the mouth. This mechanism has since broken, rendering SCP-6373's jaw loose and uncontrollable. SCP-6373-4 is referred to as Jacques and serves as the group's comic relief. Jacques often reiterates the phrase, isn't that funny, to punctuate its antics. Addendum 6373-1 History and Performance Summaries The Gofford Theatre was opened in Reading, Pennsylvania in 1860 by French immigrant and entrepreneur Timothy Gofford. The theatre was host to stage plays, musical performances, and in-house puppet shows that featured SCP-6373. The puppets were personally designed by Gofford, who maintained an intensive interest in puppeteering and often participated in the show's production. These shows were massively profitable and popular among Redding's children. It is unknown if SCP-6373 held any anomalous significance during the theater's operation, but written evidence detailing payrolls of puppeteers and printed copies of scripts intended to be performed by SCP-6373 suggests they were ordinary puppets. In 1884, the theater closed due to embezzlement committed by Gofford's wife, Cynthia Cordier. Cordier's actions were presumably in retaliation to Gofford's unfaithfulness in their marriage. This resulted in a divorce and subsequent legal battle, which Gofford lost. In 1886, Gofford wrote a letter to his wife, a portion of which has been transcribed below. I write to you in poor health and all joy sapped from my life. May misfortune follow you until the end of your days. I will not construct again that which I had spent two decades of my life working towards. I can only thank God's grace that the building has remained vacant, as I could not bear to see it owned by another man. I want to perform again and see the children smile. My happiness was so linked to theirs. One week later, Gofford disappeared. No evidence of his whereabouts were found. The letter remains his last known communication with another individual. Records indicate Cynthia Cordier would die of natural causes four months later. In 1887, the American Secure Containment Initiative discovered SCP-6373 during an inspection of the building. Anomalous effects were documented thereafter, and containment continued after the American Secure Containment Initiative had been assimilated into the SCP Foundation. A log of notable SCP-6373 performances have been recorded below. Performance Summary 1887-1022 First Recorded Performance Lighting fixtures around the theater collectively power on several minutes before the show, and a slight piano accompaniment originating from an unknown source is heard throughout the event. Pierre rescues a princess, a costumed Jacques, from a dragon played by Glouton. Researchers note several moments when an SCP-6373 instance has difficulty maintaining posture and moving, often taking multiple attempts to lift limbs. These moments increase in frequency over time. Performance Summary 1895-0417 Pierre and the other puppets take the roles of criminals recovering after a botched bank robbery attempt. As they attempt to figure out who alerted the police to their activities, they come to the conclusion that it was a May. The puppets spend the rest of the performance using the spherical M.A. as a ball in a game of soccer. It eventually devolves into a contest to see which puppet can kick M.A. the hardest. Pierre berates M.A. for betraying its trust and breaking the bond they had shared after years of working together. Examination of liquid secreted by a May puppet indicates chemical similarity to human tears. Performance Summary 1916-0229 the puppets reenact a scene on a farm, while the German-Russian conflict known as the Battle of Tannenberg is waged nearby. Glouten and Jock take the role of a German and Russian soldier respectively and act out a slapstick battle in a field. Sounds of war and human suffering are heard throughout. The subsequent scene inside the farmhouse features Pierre and May as a husband and wife. Pierre laments that its crops have been destroyed due to the war and calls to May for support. The puppets remain silent, even as Pierre's cries grow louder and more frantic as it shifts the blame of the crop's destruction from the war to Amé itself. Pierre states that Amé will never be let out again, presumably referring to the house. Performance Summary 1922-08-21 
SCP-6373 perform a similar narrative as the first recorded SCP-6373 event. Audiences note each puppet sounds discontented in its delivery of dialogue. Movements do not sync up with dialogue, and instances move in frantic bursts, hanging limp when not speaking. The ending, where Pierre escapes with Jock while Glouton flees, is altered. Instead, Pierre directly attacks Glouton with a plastic sword while berating the puppet for being useless. Glouton acts as if it were dead, and Pierre comments on its acting, stating, that isn't what being dead feels like. Future SCP-6373 events are noticeably more dissonant and aggressive in tone. Performance Summary 1938-1104 First direct audience acknowledgement by SCP-6373. Puppets engage in a comedic sketch involving dancing. Instances move in slow jerking motions while dialogue is quickly paced. Pierre becomes frustrated that the other puppets are unable to synchronize themselves and suspects they are being intentionally uncooperative. Pierre brandishes a prop hose and sprays water at the puppets. This removes paint from their bodies. High-pitched feminine screams are heard throughout the theater with no discernible point of origin. Pierre turns to the audience and states, it's always the same kids out there. Performance ends with Pierre hurling a may into the crowd after it attempted to roll off stage. From this point on, Pierre speaks to the audience while performing usually to seek approval before berating another puppet. All paint was restored by the next event. Future performances frequently feature Pierre accusing other puppets of malfeasance and taking physical action as a result. Performance Summary 1952-01-11 Pierre performs a piano duet with Jacques who is unable to be quiet or still. Though Jacques apologizes, Pierre repeatedly slams the puppet's head into the piano, denting it. When Pierre is finished, viewers note Jacques' jaw has detached completely. Jacques' laughter turns into pained cries as the puppet takes damage. Within minutes, viscous yellow fluid begins to seep from Jacques as it fails to reattach its jaw. Audience describe the liquid's odor as repugnant. Pierre retrieves a may and forces the puppet to sit in a puddle of the fluid. This event marks the beginning of a trend towards increasingly violent behavior. While puppets sustain heavy damage as a result, they begin each performance fully restored. Notably, Jacques' jaw is never fixed, and the fluids continue to seep from the puppet. Performance Summary 1958-03-30 Shortest Performance 2 minutes in duration Pierre is teaching an art class where each puppet is painting on a canvas. Glouton's canvas displays the words, open inside. When Pierre sees this, it becomes infuriated and ends the event, leading the puppets off stage. SCP-6373 instances disappear and are unable to be located. For the next 24 hours, an unidentified male voice swears and screams from behind the stage's curtain, punctuated by bouts of loud banging and clattering. The source is not discerned. Lights remain powered on and centered on the stage. SCP-6373 re-emerged at 1800 hours the following day for a routine performance. Performance Summary 1963-08-21 Pierre takes the stage and berates the audience for attending. Pierre asks if the audience is aware that in death, a soul can still wither. Pierre's voice changes to that of a woman's and delivers a eulogy in memory of Timothy Gofford. Later investigation revealed that a funeral was not held for Gofford. Performance Summary 1971-06-06 Performance is routine, involving a sketch where Pierre teaches Jacques how to play baseball using a May as the ball. Jacques is hesitant to hurt a May but is pressured into doing so. All dialogue is delivered in a monotonous male voice as opposed to their ordinary intonations. There are frequent pauses and sighs in each puppet's delivery. This voice persists throughout all remaining SCP-6373 events. Movements during this performance are notably more loose and fluid than before. When an instance appears to have difficulty moving, it will strike itself, restoring fluid motion. Performance Summary 1973-01-13 Puppets wear large papier-mâché facsimiles of human bodies and interact with each other in a sitcom household environment. Audience members report hearing a faint laugh track in the background 
though one is not present in the recordings of the event. Over time, the suits begin to decompose. Layers of paper mache slough off to reveal loose viscera. Pierre frequently assaults Aimé with various household objects and at one point causes the puppet to split in two after breaking it open with the corner of the table. Pierre encourages its two sons, Glouton and Jock, to belittle or berate Aimé throughout. Performance ends with Glouton pushing a cabinet of dinner plates on top of the half-destroyed Aimé. Examination of material left on stage following the event revealed it to be bovine in composition. Excess blood, fluid, and viscera remained on stage throughout later performances and began to rot. Removal was deemed impossible. Performance Summary 1976-07-02 SCP-6373 does not take the stage. Instead, the event is projected onto the stage's curtains by shadows. Their source is unknown. All puppets take part in insulting M.A., claiming that it is responsible for their current situation and it is the sole reason they are unable to move forward. Pierre pries M.A.'s eyes open with a pair of pliers. Jacques spews fluid onto M.A., causing the puppet to scream. Pierre forces Glouton to consume and regurgitate M.A. M.A. is beaten with shovels, drilled holes into with a power tool, and squeezed by a vice to the point of breaking entirely. Event lasts four hours uninterrupted. During this process, the Pierre puppet emerges from behind the curtain and attempts an ordinary performance of Jack and the Beanstalk, while the shadows of Jack and Glouton continue to beat Ame. All researchers' attempts to open the Ame puppet's eyelids have failed. Performance Summary 1979-09-18 Puppets retell and reenact the story of Timothy Gofford's life framing him as an individual who is treated unfairly by society and his circumstances. Performance concludes with Pierre stating that Timothy Gofford died alone, miserable, and never experiencing love. There is no mention of Cynthia Cordier throughout the performance. The puppet states that the Gofford Theater remains Timothy's lasting legacy and thanks the audience for their continued support. Pierre then flagellates itself to the point of knocking its head off its shoulders and releasing a mass of blowfly larvae from its neck. A feminine scream emerges from the hole. Larvae are unable to be removed from the stage, except when it is consumed by rats inhabiting the theater. Performance Summary 1979-09-18 SCP-6373 perform a retelling of Hansel and Gretel. All instances deteriorate considerably, seemingly without reason. Puppets have mobility issues throughout, sometimes repeating actions several times or falling to the ground. The performance is entirely silent until the final scene, where Pierre and Jacques toss a costumed glouton into a mock oven. As the puppet burns, it states, it cannot stay together anymore. All puppets collapse. Observation of the Gofford Theater later reveals that the structural integrity of the building is in jeopardy due to previously undiscovered infestation of termites and wood decaying fungi in key construction areas. Performance Summary 1983-08-02 SCP-6373 instances hold a mock funeral for a May and spend the rest of the performance exploding various afterlifes that the puppet may be delivered to complete with props and costumes. Puppets are notably culturally insensitive when discussing non-Western afterlifes. Event concludes with shock commenting on the excess of punitive afterlifes, and that it's impossible to truly know which a person should believe in to achieve salvation. Pierre then states, it knows the answer. We're all dead. This is the only afterlife there is. Puppets then go limp and remain in this state for a week, missing seven performances. All future performances lack props and costumes, marking a decline in performance effort by SCP-6373. Performance Summary 1984-03-18 Pierre tells nonsensical jokes which Jacques and Glouton laugh excessively at. Pierre then goes on a tirade about wanting to injure members of the audience while performing and then asks the crowd if they feel similar. Glouton admits that it fantasizes about wanting to break a child's arms every second it's alive. Pierre then asks the audience for a volunteer to demonstrate breaking an arm. The performance is silent for 46 minutes before researcher Lang volunteers herself. Pierre snaps Lang's arm at the elbow, fracturing her ulna. 
The puppet cites her resemblance to that as greatly increasing its enjoyment of the act. The performance ends. Lang is reassigned to a different anomaly following treatment. Future performances infrequently include SCP-6373 committing acts of violence towards a member of the audience. Performance Summary 1984-09-18 Last performance with discernible dialogue. Event is composed entirely of Pierre stating the full name, birth, and expiration date of every patron of the Gofford Theatre from its opening to present. Members of the audience are included in this routine. Throughout the act, Pierre's movements are awkward, and its speech is slow and slurred. Event concludes with Pierre looking to the ceiling stating, You carry on so well, before violently throwing itself across the stage multiple times. Performance Summary 1985-02-12 Performances have degraded to frenzies of self-harm carried out by each puppet. Stage lighting is absent or flickers. Musical accompaniment is discordant and cacophonous. Instances self-mutilate, flagellate, and flay themselves through the use of the stage floor's friction, each other, or blunt force trauma. Screams range from high-pitched feminine voices to deep male ones. Occasional laughter is heard during male screams. Performance Summary 1985-04-25 All puppets sit on the stage motionless occasionally turning their heads to monologue to the audience in a nonsensical, indecipherable fashion. Several researchers claimed the puppets were directly gazing at them. All future dialogue and performances consist solely of moaning, grunting, screaming, and weeping with extended periods of inactivity. Physical actions are often limited to standing or sitting. Performance Summary 1985-05-13 Performance is entirely indecipherable. Performance Summary 1985-06-09 Final Performance SCP-6373 instances stand side by side for 18 minutes. No dialogue is heard. They collectively bow and fall to the ground. Stage lights and music cease. No further events occur. See addenda for details. Following the 1985-06-09 performance, all SCP-6373 instances began the deterioration process observed prior, shedding their papier-mâché exteriors. When this was complete, each instance was discovered to contain preserved human remains and organs, which had been segmented cleanly at several termination points. All remains are presumably sourced from a single individual. Their contents have been listed below. Pierre contained a brain. Jacques contained a heart, Glouton contained a conglomerate mass of excess organs, an unbroken layer of epidermal skin tissue, fecal matter, and hair. Ame was empty. Examination of unfolded skin tissue found within Glouton revealed a resemblance to person of interest 6373 Cynthia Cordier. Object has been reclassified as neutralized. I'm just going to take this off the screen. I hate puppets. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Zargaran, Professor Puffer, The Morrigan, Ritalius, Karim El Ashmui, Nicholas Hayes, Gav, the clumsy containment specialist, Spooky Aqua, Jebby, Pure Osmium, Sio Diodemnatus, Revenant, Brian Sanchez, Matthew Gilmore, Eric Corbage, Longinus, Carcass Death Aqua, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Volgan. Thank you.